I'm starting to see like, you know, legislations come through that say, you know, we have to create legislation to get food prices down. You know, these grocery stores, they raise their prices during the pandemic because of supply chain, but they never really brought them down. Man, I, I don't, you know, I would love my groceries to be cheaper. Who doesn't want cheaper groceries? Get ready for a new episode of KP Talks Dollars and Cents. Learn financial literacy and get real-time updates on all things housing, finance, and real estate. So let's get started. Here's your host, Kevin Perenio. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Corona, California. So Monday, I'll be in Austin at the Texas NBA, which is a fantastic trade uh, show. It's a state organization, very well run. For me, it's Austin, right down there, more than New York. So I'm not going to make it a secondary, uh, but Gary Malice will be there from our company. Uh, so safe travels, everyone traveling all over the place for all these great trade shows. Okay, Supreme Court ruled today. CFPB's funding is constitutional. Uh, there was a, uh, a court of appeals, a circuit court of appeals that said it was unconstitutional, and then uh, that was appealed and went to the Supreme Court, and they said, no, this is uh, part of the regulatory uh, body of our financial systems, and the Federal Reserve funding the CFPB is allowed. And so it does not need an act of Congress to be funded. Uh, and so... Um, you know, the Mortgage Banker Association, which we're a part of, took a stance that um, if it had been ruled unconstitutional, that the the chaos that would have come after this unwinding uh, would have been crazy. So, um, you know, so we basically have, uh, at least for now, set in stone from this court ruling that whoever the president is gets to handpick at will, at cause, cause, no cause, whatever it is. Uh, whoever runs uh, the CFPB, and um, it is basically um, a political arm of the administration um, in charge, for better or for worse. Um, I think generally um, you have a lot of people at the CFPB who do a good job. I've had a chance to meet a ton of them on the road, and uh, they do truly uh, look out for consumers. And it's okay if um, there are disagreements in uh, the way you, you go about it, but uh, NBA President Bob Brooksmith will be on stage again uh, Rohit Chopra, the uh, director of the CFPB, will be on stage together with Bob. Again, it's really great conversation to watch them. And I love the fact that Rohit uh, puts it out there. So uh, great conversation. I will miss that in New York. Uh, big landmark ruling. So let's all move forward and just try and make this a better ecosystem for everybody. How about that? Okay. Uh, speaking of what's better for everybody, inflation is slowing. Now, uh, it's less bad news. Now, here's the thing I just want to make sure everyone understands. It's like um, inflation numbers coming down just means it's going up at a slower pace. So uh, prices are still going up. Um, in fact, I think the administration here in election year um, is starting to kind of catch wind that the price of everything is really going to hurt uh, at the poll booth. And I'm starting to see, um, I'm starting to see like, you know, legislations come through that say, you know, we have to create legislation to get food prices down. You know, these grocery stores, they raise their prices during the pandemic because of supply chain, but they never really brought them down. Man, I, I don't, you know, I would love my groceries to be cheaper. Who doesn't want cheaper groceries? But, um, you know, in an election year when Congress isn't passing anything else, um, you know, I, I don't know how this is, you know, anything other than political theater, but man, um, maybe something will happen. I don't know. I'd love to see the food prices come down, but um, you know, it's a big deal. When uh, people who are running for election are, you know, trying to say they're doing something that they can't actually really do uh, because, uh, you know, uh, the NBA had a great event um, earlier this year and Chuck Todd from MSNBC was the keynote speaker. And he said something very interesting. His favorite takeaway I had from his entire night. He was very cool and gracious to stay and talk to everybody afterwards as well. How people feel generally in June, that's in like two weeks. Um, so, you know, next 45 days. Um, that is how they feel about the economy carrying into uh, November during the election. I, I'd never heard it posited that way. So um, the conspiracy theorists out there are saying that Jerome Powell, a known Republican, uh, in is is holding out on cutting rates to keep rates high, uh, which hurts everybody, but um, definitely hurts uh, the, the lower end of the socio demographic. Um, you know, parts of our country. So 
Uh, I'm not going to get into that. I don't want to get into politics. You know, I don't like all that stuff. But it's very interesting to hear all these different opinions. And the Fed has not cut yet, but inflation is going up less quickly. And so the CPI report was a big deal. Um, I've been talking about auto assurance all year, and uh, it went up 22% year over year. Now, we know auto insurance isn't going to keep going up that much. Um, is it? Uh, gosh, I mean, I've been wrong about a couple things lately. Uh, but, man, can auto insurance continue to go up every single month? Um, our dear friend Barry Habib, who, by the way, rocked the stage live today at UWM, uh, UWM Live up in Detroit. They do a big event up there, and Barry was a keynote speaker. Um, I saw a lot of videos and people posting on uh, Instagram. Uh, Barry said, hey, I got this thing I'm scheduled to do. It's kind of a big deal, you know, on May 16th. And his doctors were like, uh, no way, man. You're like in the middle of chemotherapy, and there's no way you're going to be able to make it. Dude, you made it. You made it, rocked it. Everyone I've uh, heard from and seen post videos. Looked awesome, bringing the heat, bringing the energy, and bringing the data. Um, you know, I, I I went back and looked at their CPI breakdown, and they were showing um, that in uh, within the CPI report that um, they noticed that auto insurance of like the three point four or three point five or whatever the number was, uh, that's the the the, the run there, uh, like point eight percent or something like that was auto insurance. Shelter was over two and a half percent of that. You know, that three, five, three, four number, whatever it is. I don't know the math breakdown. All other components. Let's see, a shelter, which has a lagging effect for owner's equivalent rent, which means we all know that new rents are, are less, but it's not going to show up until we cycle out the old rent data from 12 months ago. Really? We're still looking at that? Anyway, and then auto insurance. Just those two, shelter and insurance, okay? Take those out. All the other components, 0. 0.27. And um, I know... Uh, from Fundstrat, Tom Lee, I, I pay for their subscription and, uh, and, and information. And um, they said in the CPI that like 70% of the components within the CPI are under 1.7%. So, you know, so, but let's get off this 2% kick because Fed Chair Powell has been speaking. And what he said, I just, I just wonder, because everyone's like 2%, 2%, like, no, yeah. no, not six minute abs, seven minute abs. I know, I get it. Everyone's like, fixated on this 2%. That Chair Powell said that they are now equally looking at imbalance, labor, and inflation. Okay? So that means, uh, remember, the, the Fed board, when they vote and they do their dot plots and they do all these things, which we're going to get a dot plot here, uh, June 12th. So we're now just under four weeks away from getting another look at how they feel. We've got a PCE read coming up, another jobs report. So we've got a lot more data coming out before the next the Fed meeting and dot plot. And so I don't think we'll see the CPI in June. It'll be close, uh, but I know they will have seen it um, get a couple of days in advance. So a lot of labor data that's softening. And obviously now we have slowing inflation. And um, if you don't believe me, believe the bondanistas. Remember the bond traders, the 10-year treasury? They're the smartest people on Wall Street. Why, did, why didn't they go back up to 5%? They stopped at 471 uh, intraday 4.74, and then they're coming down to the 200 moving day average. The 10 year treasury, which is very reflective of mortgage rates, is down around 4.34. I think the latest today, if I just click on this little bar chart here, is like 4.34, uh, 4.38 was the close today, uh, open uh, 4.34. So mortgage rates have come down. Why have they legged down? Why didn't they go up? Why do we have a lower high? When all those three months of inflation, we only got to 471. Why did we get all the way back up to five like we did back in October? Trend is your friend. The economy is slower. It's not slow. It's slowing. It's slower. Um, inflation is less hot. It's still hot and still high, but it's coming down. And labor is now softening. And so that is a new thing that the Fed is really keeping an eye on. So we all will as well. Pan, their yen peaked out in value in 21 and for three and a half years has been coming down. It's come down 34%. That's major for uh, a, a global currency. You know, they're the largest foreign buyer of um, of our treasuries, which by the way, you know, you, you want to know why, you know, there's a mechanism there, right? The bond and ESAs were revolting. They wanted high yield. You saw the 10-year yield on the backs of not only those three hot uh, months of inflation, but coming up to the the, the, the Treasury's uh, refunding and balance uh, announcement. 
How much do we have to sell? How much does the market have to, you know, saturate, soak up and buy? Well, now, as since that announcement and since the Fed meeting, the 10-year treasury has been coming down. And oh, by the way, as of May 1st, the Fed announced they will be buying treasuries. They are reducing their balance sheet runoff. They are doing less quantitative tightening. So the trend is your friend. Um, I could go into a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't know if there's anything interesting to go over before I, I get shut off here in my, my 10 minutes. Um, that's it. Have a great weekend. Safe travels. Cheers. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Austin, Texas at the Hotel Van Sant. We got Rainy Street over here. Get a little sunset over here on Town Lake. Condo buildings and hotels everywhere. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Rainy Street Ripper, which is an actual uh, serial killer that is happening right down the street. And condos going up. And of course, why the hell is the New York secondary at the exact same time as the TMBA? And we'll talk about inflation. So I'm on my way over to, uh, well, first of all, many of you know, I went to University of Texas at Austin. I lived here for nine years, only four years of college for the record. And um, I love this city. So for me, it's Austin over Times Square every day of the week. And I heard from people at the NBA, hey, we always have the New York secondary around the same time. So let me just say this, okay? The California MBA is doing the Mortgage Innovator Conference next May at the Waterfront Hotel in Huntington Beach. And then there's the TMBA annual and then the MBA secondary in New York. Guys, get on the same page. Y'all work it out and get your dates down. So May's not a busy month. Those are literally like the only three shows that go on during the month in our mortgage banking world. So please, like, coordinate. Do I need... Call me. Guys, call me. Yeah, just we'll wiggle it. All right. So, uh, Rainy Street, when I was here from 94 to 98 at UT, this little section had some, uh, like, some little houses, right, which are now restaurants and bars. Um, there's still a couple original houses left. Like, that's a house, like, right there, okay? And they haven't sold out yet. Trust me, they don't make enough money with their food and beverage revenue to not be one of these monstrosities right here, right? So it's only a matter of time. And for those that are into conspiracy theory, uh, look up the Rainy Street Ripper. There's been like four or five white male, like under age 30. Thank God I'm 47. I'm too old for this serial killer, apparently. Been strangled right over there on the, on the river. Look it up. Okay. So lots of good speakers, great content. Thank you, Bob Brooksmith, for, um, you know, starting off our conference uh, in New York uh, on a high note. And um, ready for opening comments again tomorrow with Dustin and the team for TMBA. I had some great sessions this morning. Um, but let's talk about inflation. Let's talk about CPI and PPI that just came out last week. I just have a couple comments to talk about. So it's very interesting. And then I'll... I'll Oh, get out of here. Get out of your hair. The CPI is coming down. Okay? That is not the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. Their preferred measure of inflation is the PCE. By the way, I'm filming directly into the LinkedIn app camera, and it's very shaky. When I film on my regular camera with Samsung, which is the best camera in the world, uh, it, it like keeps it from shaking, but I can't upload videos anymore to LinkedIn. It's so weird. Uh, this is the convention center and Ironworks barbecue. Okay, inflation spawned like a rock. You guys can stop being fixated on 2% inflation, okay? The Fed's not fixated. And all the Fed speakers are coming out this week and they'll be talking about and releasing their minutes. They have said, Jerome Powell, the chair has said, they are looking at employment which is softening, and inflation, which is coming down equally. Remember, they have a dual mandate, really a tri-mandate, like, you know, the interest rates and the 30-year bond being at a reasonable price, which, by the way, if the Eurozone cuts first in June, we're likely to follow. If we, you know, all the central banks kind of coordinate, and they cut within, they raise and cut within the same time frame, more or less, with each other. So not only is there a Fed meeting June 12th, but um, the Eurozone may be cutting in June. Cutting. And we're 
we didn't cut in May, but we reduced our balance sheet runoff by $35 billion a month. And the minutes that come out from the Fed's meeting this week, we'll talk about that. Leading economic indicators, big deal came out last Friday, economy slowing. Okay. So I think what happened was, sorry, this is so weird. This is just weird. Austin's weird. Keep it weird. I love it. Um, the leading economic indicators show the economy slowing. And when the Fed came out on December 13th and basically said, yeah, we're going to cut three times, a lot of people think that actually spurred the inflation, an extra boost of liquidity that popped into the system, anticipating five, six, seven Fed rate cuts help create more inflation. Rick Reeder, BlackRock fixed income asset manager, literally in charge of trillions of dollars, at least a trillion dollars. He said, hey, that meaning and higher rates have caused inflation. Well, now we've seen some information that the economy is slowing. The leading economic indicators show that the economy is slowing. And uh, GDP is not growing as much. And let me tell you about the CPI, okay? The Consumer Price Index actually said, oh, here we are. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here we are. Here we are. We are, we are live at the TMBA. So Black Band and Graham, which is a great company that does uh, title and interviews, Black Band and Graham, Blood Skin Vital, Barber Law, look up Claire Barber, and uh, CoreLogic. CoreLogic and BMG are hosting an event right here on this patio, so I'll be up here in just a second. Uh, okay, so, so CPI is coming down. Housing-related goods and services are down. The lowest rate of inflation since 2011, okay? It's a big deal. 1.7% uh, is the increase. It's like furniture, appliances, moving expenses, uh, home improvement. That number in the CPI is down. You know what's up in the CPI? Shelter, which we all know, like... There's nothing the Fed can do about that. We don't have enough housing supply. And auto insurance. Auto insurance is up 22% year over year. Do you think that's going to keep going at that rate every month? There's no way. So of the 3.4% of the CPI that came out last week, 0.84 is just auto insurance. That's going to come down. So we, we can't be fixated on this 2% inflation because the Fed isn't. Labor is softening, and that's a problem. If someone goes from gainful employment to no employment or can't find a job or can't quit and get a wage increase quickly enough to keep up with inflation, there's not enough money in the system to pay for goods and services. 70% of our economy is consumer spending. Boomers got lots of money, very wealthy, but the rest of us, we got to work. So uh, labor softening is a big deal. Um... You know, the PPI came out last week and the auto insurance components in the PPI, the producer price index, were coming down. And that will feed into the CPI report that we will see in June for the month of May. So we're watching uh, all this stuff come down. We're watching the economy slow down. We're watching inflation's uh, rate of increase slow. And we're watching the Eurozone. Uh, we're not... As many people are, are, are homeowners and they've had a lot of slack in their labor um, uh, part of the economy, like people, you know, the employment's not as great in Europe. So we may see that cut come in June and that together with our slowing growth, softening labor, and of course, inflation continuing to come down. We're going to see that all play, um, you know, uh, into the Fed's thinking and we'll see where it goes. In the meantime, uh, let's keep crushing it. Spring purchase season still rocking and rolling. I mean, People still want to get houses. Um, did see some listing data from uh, uh, Mike Simonson, Altus Research, Logan Motoshami, all of them at Housing Wire. Um, we actually saw listings come down last week, so that's very interesting. So anyway, um, great group here, TMBA. Obviously, I miss you guys in New York. We'll, we'll work it out next year, right? Cheers. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Corona, California. Been away for a few days at the Texas Mortgage Banker Association annual show, and of course, at the same time, we had the New York uh, secondary and uh, from the NBA, and there are a couple takeaways I want to get into about it. 
but first, before we get into that, housing news and an interesting take on the Fed and how they actually want inflation. It will actually make sense when I try and explain it and I fumble around whatever I've read about it. Uh, let's talk about Memorial Day. We are heading into Memorial Day weekend. It is 12.30 a.m. Uh, after midnight on Thursday. It is Friday morning officially. And uh, remember, Memorial Day is uh, here to honor those that served our country, armed forces, services, Coast Guard, first responders, medical professional. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a great weekend. And so let's just make sure we do that. How are you celebrating that? Um, I just saw an article around Orange County, all the different things going on, all the different celebrations. It's very cool. Um, I moved to Newport Beach about eight years ago uh, uh, to come work at the corporate office here uh, with the uh, leadership and executive team at PRMG. And um, right um, on like the cliff of this neighborhood that uh, that I'm kind of near, it's called Castaways Park, and it's pretty cool. It's basically like an overlook that overlooks the harbor at Newport Beach, and they put 1,776 American flags up there. This little guy right here. And uh, they just line them all up, and there are names and placards of former Orange County uh, people who have passed that were in the armed forces. There's a monument that's there. It's a permanent statue with a lot of names from uh, you know all the different wars that we fought uh, with Orange County uh, Armed Service uh, men and women that have fallen. And uh, like 1776, the year uh, we were created. Um, it's, a, it's a great place. So if you've ever been to Caspays Park, uh, Good for you. Go check it out if you're local. Um, and what else is going on? Um, the National Plan to End Parkinson's Act uh, just uh, passed Congress. So it had passed the House in the fall, and uh, it passed the Senate. And it is going to President Biden's desk. Uh, my father battled Parkinson's for 22 years and lost uh, his uh, life about three years ago due to complications of Parkinson's. So um, you know, it just kind of overtakes your body. It's a tough disease. Has anyone else on here uh, battled uh, Parkinson's or have a family member that has? Love to share your your uh, your journey uh, down below with us in the community. And Stan Curlin, the uh, co-founder founder of Penny Mac, uh, there is a memorial uh, golf tournament uh, that Penny Mac is putting on. And um, I just made it official. I'm going to go to that. It's the third time they've done it. They've raised three and a half million dollars the last couple of years. So, um, you know, they've really helped, um, you know, with the UCLA uh, oncology team uh, to find uh, some genetic blockers and uh, and some treatments uh, to reduce, in some cases, uh, significantly glioba uh, glioblastoma, which is um, a rare aggressive form of brain cancer that um, Stan passed from. So. Uh, lots going on, lots of, uh, you know, planning to beat diseases and great battles and honoring those that have served. So let's think about that um, as we try not to stress out over this crazy business that we're in. Um, you know, some takeaways from, uh, you know, the uh, the NBA, President Bob Brooksman had a great um, opening speech. You can go to NBA.org and you can go to the newsroom and you could read it or you can go to the Christian blog, which reposted it. Uh, in its entirety, uh, Bob was um, talking about regulatory knots and some of the things that we're having to face. Uh, had a nice verbal joust uh, for a couple of years running now with CFPB uh, Director Rohit uh, uh, Chopra, which I think is uh, great that uh, uh, the CFP, CFPB Director continues to go on stage and be vocal and collaborate together with the Mortgage Banker Association. So. Um, you just don't see that kind of collaboration and and transparency uh, like you do at the NBA annual, uh, or in this case, the secondary. Um, so trying to work out the, quote, regulatory knots, as Bob Brooksman put it, and um, they put together a proposal from the NBA to have a national po uh, housing uh, policy director. So uh, I think Housing Wire dubbed it as the housing czar, but, you know, someone to help cut through, uh, you know, the red tape. There's so many different... Uh, policy uh, think tanks and departments and government agencies, and it's hard to get them all aligned, right? So, um, you know, maybe someone, uh, even if at the behest of whatever administration is in power, um, you know, it's just someone to cut to the red tape um, to be able to see things that work and don't work uh, from a mile away. So um, what else uh, What else is going on? I was at the uh, Texas MBA and 
um, you know, great new uh, female ladder. So for the first time in like the 105 or 108 years of the Texas Mortgage Banker Association chapter, state chapter, there are four female executives um, that are on what they call the ladder. So it's like basically the progression of who will be the leadership for the next four years, all female. So first time ever for the state of Texas, my home state. Love to see that. Um, one of my favorite takeaways was my, my buddy Tim Fisher had a panel there at the end of the day, the last uh, panel with him and uh, uh, Nicolette Chapman from Zonda and uh, uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch Klein, uh, you know, a couple uh, different gentlemen up there on the panel. Uh, and uh, I believe it was uh, Jeff, I believe, who was the CEO of, uh, uh, was it Click and Close, Click and Save? Uh, great comments by all of them. But Tim Fisher said there's $80 billion in non-QM business getting done this year. About 45% of that is from uh, bank statements. And another 45% of that is from DSCR, which serves a lot of uh, investor properties. Uh, you know, um, his co-worker, uh, Tom Davis, uh, had, was quoted in the Kristen blog from the New York MBA saying one in four properties are investor properties now. So if you're not doing one or four of your loans and originations as investment, maybe you get, need to learn non-QM. That's been one of my keys to success uh, that I've been trying to teach uh, and talk about and preach for originators for about a year and a half. Uh, that other 10% of non-QM business is second liens, which the comment period just ended uh, for Freddie Mac, who was advised by their regulator, the FHFA, to do second liens on first lien Freddie product up to 80% CLTV. The bank said, no, we don't like it, of course, because you're cutting into their business. And then all the independent uh, mortgage uh, bankers like CHLA and um, uh, you know other different shows, they um, uh, trade show and advocates uh, for IMB said, yeah, we think it's a good idea. MBA is looking for further information. So they took the middle ground there. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, could bank statement program, um, you know, be something that the GSEs do at some point? Uh, I mean, they already do cash flow underwriting. I mean, I think Fannie and Freddie would love to take a look at 12 to 24 months of bank statements. The, the automation tools are great out there. So we're going to see some disruption in um, potentially HELOC and equity lending and uh, maybe even bank statement lending down the road. So those are just some some things. Okay, what happened to the market? So after our uh, weaker CPI report last week um, and you know rates got better, now they've kind of, the 10-year treasuries kind of drifted a little bit higher. Why? Uh, because the unemployment uh, data and the uh, uh, growth data for the, uh, the economy were somewhat positive. So uh, less bad news, which means typically 10-year yields go up and interest rates go up. So bad news in the economy is good news for mortgage interest rates makes them come down. So S&P Flash came out, showed some growth. But, you know, it's kind of mixed. Kansas City Fed manufacturing uh, was flat in May. Chicago Fed national activity dipped in April. New home sales down, existing home sales down, um, you know, mostly a reflection of a one-month pop in rates. So we're seeing that trickle through the data. Don't really have a whole lot of data next week, short week. Uh, really, we're waiting for the jobs report, the BLS jobs report and the inflation reports to start to come out in the month of June, reporting for the month of May. So we'll see what's going to happen. Okay, I promise I'd tell you why the Fed wants inflation because uh, they have a good cover here, right? That, you know, inflation's high, got to keep our rates high before they start cutting. But once they start cutting, uh, there are some theories out there that, of course, inflation will run back up again, which means the, the dollar will be devalued. So when they have to pay back old debt, so the Fed and the Treasury Department working together to pay back old debt that we keep taking out more and more new ones, when you're paying back old debt, you're paying it back with dollars that are worth less. So those bondholders are getting less powerful dollars once they get paid off. That's a big reason why China and the BRICS company, uh, countries are buying gold and buying uh, less uh, treasuries because of this inflation monetary uh, theory. Modern monetary theory, you can go look it up. So I thought that was interesting. I can get to a million other things, but NVIDIA crushed it. Any day traders out here? Tell me how you did. I got crushed on a trade uh, last week, but I made a nice little pop this morning. Have a great and wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Cheers. You've been listening to KP Talks Dollars and Cents, a top-rated show for those who want to learn about the economy and mortgage environment. Tune in each week for more episodes, and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. 
Kevin Perenio does not render or offer to render personalized investment or tax advice through KP Talks Dollars and Cents. The information provided is for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more info, follow KP Talks Dollars and Cents on all of our social channels.